All right, so we're going to talk about how to break up a given quotient function. So you have a function over another function. Break that up into smaller, more manageable fractions. So we've got a little formula here. Um, we've got some sort of polynomial p of x and q of x. You can rewrite this using the following form. You, you pick uh, a1 or, or whatever variable you want. I, I you typically go a, b, c, d, that sort of thing. Uh, you go a1, a2, all the way to an, given the number of products you have. So you have n different products. So if you can break the denominator up into multiple products of things that will turn it into zero, essentially. Something uh, along the lines of what you would have learned when solving for a specific x. You set everything equal to zero, make it a product, and then each of those individuals had to zero, uh, go to zero. It makes the whole thing zero, that sort of thing. All right, so we're going to use this process. We're going to break it up, and I'm going to do problem number 182 for you to give you an idea of, of how it's done. Now, the, the reason we're going to want to do this uh, specifically is you take a look at this, uh, so this 182, so 1 over x minus 3 times x minus 2, this is the same as writing as 1 over uh, x squared minus 5x plus 6. And we have no real good way of integrating x 1 over x squared minus 5x plus 6. There's no good substitution or anything like that. But if we can break it into things that look like this here. So this is going to equal some value a over x minus 3 plus some value. I'm going to call it b. We can use a1 and a2 if you want, but I typically like a, b. Again, our formula up there is a1, a2, a, a to up to an, but do what you want as long as you make sure that uh, you're notating them properly. properly. So x minus 2 for this one. So how would we solve this? Well, if we multiply everything through by this x minus 3x, now let's draw that a little better, excuse me, x minus 3x plus 2, if we multiply each side of the equation by that, so essentially what I'm going to do, I'll just do it in black, I'm going to multiply this, let's keep that away, by x minus 3 times x minus 2. And I'm multiplying this bit by that same you know, x minus 3 times x minus 2. Well, what I get are some cancellations, certainly. This cancels with this. This cancels with this. So I'm left with just the number 1 on the left. Okay, 1 over 1 is 1. It does, doesn't turn into 1 over 0 or anything like that. We're canceling. We're left with 1 in the denominator. In a similar fashion, I'm going to cancel the x minus 3 with uh, what we have with the a. So if I multiply this, if I distribute this in, and I've got a over x minus 3, my x minus 3 cancels, so I'm left with a times the quantity x minus 2. And in a similar fashion, uh, we're going to get plus b times quantity x minus 3 because the x minus 2s will cancel from the numerator and the denominator uh, with our second part with our b. And again, we're allowed to multiply each side of the equation by uh, x minus 3 times x plus x minus 2. That's, that's legal. So this is what we have. And so we have to try to solve for these a and b. So what I'm going to do right now is, is try to set it up, and I'm going to pair the x with some sort of sum or difference of, of a and b, and then I'm going to, I'm going to pair the uh, coefficient with it as well. And that way we'll have an idea, because there's no x on the left-hand side. It's just number 1. So I have 1 equaling ax minus 2a plus bx minus 3b. And I can um, 
bring out the x, so I can write this as ax plus bx uh, plus negative 2a minus 3b, right? I can do that. I can just separate these without an issue. So th what this means is, well, I can pull out an x for this first bit. And then I can leave this other alone. What this means is this A plus B, this must equal zero. And the reason is we, we have no X value on the left-hand side. So A plus B must equal zero. And we also must have that this must equal one. So we have a set of linear equations. Let me do this over here, in fact. So I have a plus b equals 0 and negative 2a minus 3b has to equal 1. Now, from algebra, you've, you've learned how to solve these things. Uh, we can use substitution or elimination. I'm simply going to use um, substitution. So this top one, this is the same thing as saying A equals negative B, right? If I subtract B from each side, I get A equals negative B. So then if I substitute into the second equation, so substitute... Um, negative b in for a in the in the, the second equation down here we get um, negative 2 times negative b because that's a minus 3b equals 1. Well then I have a positive 2b and a negative 3b that means negative b equals 1 or b equals negative 1. And if B equals negative 1, that means that A must equal 1 because they add up to 0. So all in all, this thing here, I'm going to just kind of bring this down here to show you this. So our A is 1, that equals 1 over X minus 3 plus negative 1 over x minus 2. And if you want, you can certainly have the uh, 1 over x minus 3 minus 1 over x minus 2. That, that is perfectly fine. But now this is something that we can integrate. So again, this is our answer down here, our solution. And this is a tool to help you break up some of these goofy fractions in a more reasonable way and, and give us a more reasonable way to try to solve for the integral of these.